Hello Floss Tubers! Hi, it's good to be back. This is Belinda. Well today I've got a special guest who I'm going to introduce um, in a few minutes during this video. So that's nice. It's nice to have some company and to introduce you to somebody very special. Um, today I'm going to just show you some finishes. I actually have three FFOs and also my whip that I have shown in previous videos and I'll also read a poem um, for those of you who have enjoyed according to your comments um, some of the reading that I've done in previous videos so I'm just going to jump straight into it um, the first thing the pin cushion that I showed you all on a previous date that I was working on. It was this Lizzie Kate pattern, red, white, and blue. So I have finished this. And here is the final product. So I'm going to just get that nice and close. Um, I'll show you a close up as well. It's rather a large pillow. Let me see if I put it next to my head. <laughs> You'll see. It really is quite a large pillow. Um, yeah, it would just about fit my head, wouldn't it? Not that I'm going to put my head on it. There are the details. You see red, white, and blue on there. There are beads in the center of each of the flowers. And the American flag has a variety of beads on it too. I love the wee sheep. It's grazing um, beneath the tree. So that was cute. It's just so cheerful. Lovely to have another patriotic um, project to display in the cottage. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, I will just remind you, this is a kit that came out by Lizzie Kate. And it did come with everything you see other than the thread. I had to provide the thread and the stuffing material. That is all. Um, the wool that's at the bottom here came with the kit. So did the tape, the little button. The jute that is around the outside, which I carefully stitched in place, as well as the pattern, the linen fabric that it's stitched on, and the pretty piece of quilt backing material. So I'm happy with that. So that was one finish. Then I finished a couple of other items this year, and um, I, well, I finished the stitching of them, but I just this weekend actually did the final finishing. Another kit that I found on eBay um, by The Primitive Hair. I love The Primitive Hair. They have some really awesome designs. And this is one that says it's called Be Kind. I love bees, so I love to stitch them. When I stitched this, I decided to eliminate the wording. But it's stitched on 40 count old New England linen by the Primitive here, And um, the kit did come with the linen fabric, the special linen, the chart, and enough thread to complete the pattern, as well as the pre-painted hoop. So this is fun. Uh, you could stitch the design while the linen is in the hoop. Um, but I didn't. I am just going to display it. It's intended to be displayed in the hoop itself. And note the little piece of ribbon. That's printed ribbon at the bottom there. That also came with the kit. So I'm hanging this in our kitchen in the cottage. We have an antique black painted shelf. Um, it's actually a shelving unit with three shelves. It's just tiny, which we brought over from um, to New Zealand from the United States. And I have this actually attached to the wall underneath the middle shelf. So it looks really cute. I've got some ornaments sitting in front of it. But I'm really happy with this. I love that design. And I think I'm going to stitch that B again and put it on something else because I just love that particular design. So that was my second finish. And then earlier this year, when my husband and I were traveling, um, we went back to the United States to visit friends and family. 
I stitched this, which I had also ordered on eBay, a little kit. I think it's by you and I and friends. Let me just check. Or am I getting confused? No, you and I and friends. Cute packaging. They provided all the thread, the chart, um, heaps of thread, which I bagged up. The, I don't know if the linen was, yes, I guess the linen did come with it as well. And this cute little box, which everything's packaged in. Just try and get it closer there. Adorable packaging. I wish I had that lovely blue and gold frame to frame my piece in. However, what I did was I put it in this frame. Sorry about the glare. Ooh, it looks so dark. I might pull this curtain back and see if the sunlight. Oh, it's not too bad. Um, so I put it in this yellow frame. There are some buttons also in the topiary tree. Those came with the kit. And I stitched the year 2018. It just reminds me of the cottage that we built. Um, it's just so cute. I love this. The oversized carrots. In the growing in the garden. There were some specialty stitches, uh, French knots, and some, I think it's, is it a spider stitch as well to um, actually create the little flowers. I hope you can see that. I'm hoping that the glare is not as bad when the actual video is played back. But that's adorable. And the actual name of that pattern was Summer House, again by you and I and friends. It's stitched on 32 count mocha linen, one strand of floss over two fabric threads. So it's pretty typical of their projects where you have one strand of thread over two linen threads. And it wasn't scanned. The um, stitching showed up really, really nicely, despite it being one over two. So, three finishes. Oh boy, that's really good for me. I tell you, usually I'm just going and going and going on never-ending projects, so it seems. Now a whip. And I'm going to hold it up with some paper here. So this is that Esther Cop sampler, which I have mentioned and shown you my progress on in the past. So there is how much I've done. I've only got the bottom right hand corner to complete. I think I'm going to have to make a wee interruption and introduce you to my special guest, Pearl. Pearl, would you come here please? Come up here, up here, up here. Now I wonder what on the world you're barking at. Look, say hello to everybody on Floss Tube. Let's get you some, oh, let's some, put some light on you. Why were you barking? Why were you barking? Oh yes, I know, you're so sweet. This is Pearl, everybody, and she is my dad's little dog. She's a um, jackapoodle, I guess you would call her. She's a cross between a poodle and a Jack Russell, a long-haired Jack Russell, and she's just the sweetest little thing. She lives next door, and she comes down for dinner every evening with my dad. We cook them dinner, don't we, Pearl? And I decided that Pearl would, she wanted to get in on these videos now and again. We thought we'd introduce a little feature called Pearl's Pick. And Pearl's Pick might be something that I'm reading or something that I'm stitching or something that she particularly enjoys. But she will certainly recommend whatever it is. So this is little Pearl and she's just such a sweet little thing. I think she's five or six human years old. Um, so Pearl, I think this week we'll um, introduce the poem that you picked, right? And it's called Beehive Cell. Now, um, it's written by, it was written by a poet in Ireland, 
called Richard Murphy. Richard Murphy was a very distinguished Irish poet, one of many, as Ireland has such a long tradition of brilliant writers. And um, Richard Murphy died earlier this year, I think he was in his early 90s, and he um, was a distinguished poet. He was also quite an interesting character. At one time he owned his own island off the coast of Ireland. Um, quite extraordinary, I think, to own your own island. Uh, so, but he did. He didn't keep it until he passed away. He actually did sell it, and I'm, I'm sure it sold for a lot of money because I think it was yeah into the millions. And this particular poem was one in a collection um, published, I think, in the 1960s, and it reflects on the experience of a woman who ended up giving birth to a baby in a beehive cell. Now the beehive cells were um, created, built from stone. Um, I think probably most of them date from around the 12th century and they're on the west coast of Ireland, um, places like the Dingle Peninsula. And the monks actually inhabited them. They were these beehive cells, are called beehive cells because they actually resemble the shape of an of a beehive. But they were tight, fairly small, tiny enough just for one monk to retreat into, and live a very hermit-like existence while he reflected on his faith. And um, so this poem gives voice to thank you, Pearl. Gives voice to the beehive cell as it reflects on having this woman inhabit it. So Pearl, we'll, we'll read this. It's a good recommendation. Beehive cell. There's no comfort inside me, only a small heart's tongue sprouting square with pyramidal headroom for one man alone kneeling down. A smell of peregrine mutes and eremitical boredom. Once in my 1300 years on this barren island have I felt a woman giving birth on her own in my spinal cerebellic souterrain to a living child as she knelt on earth. She crawled under my lintel that purgatorial night. Her menfolk marooned her out of their or or coracle to pick dillisk and sloke. What hand brought a light with angelica root for the pain of her miracle? Three days she throve in me, suckling the child, doing all she had to do, the sea going wild. I can only imagine what it would have been like for that woman to have given birth and spend three days in that beehive cell uh, with a newborn baby. It's quite remarkable. Uh, I can just imagine the wild coast of Ireland. Um, but pretty neat. Richard Murphy wrote a lot of other poetry about buildings or um, small sculptures such as the beehive cell in which he gives voice to those structures. Pretty neat. Thank you for that recommendation Pearl. That was certainly a good one. Now I think we're going to, if you wouldn't mind obliging me, I'm going to put you down and um, go back to showing the cross stitch. Would that be okay with you? But don't Please don't bark at anything. You gave away my surprise. It was no longer a surprise who the visitor was when you started barking. Never mind. You're a very good girl. So you can sit on my lap if you're very good. Let's try this again. I tried it earlier without the paper behind it and the light just penetrated right through the linen. I'm hoping this works out. As I said before, um, this is the Esther Cop sampler. It's in the Smithsonian. And I'm, re I'm doing the reproduction here um, with a few modifications. See the stitching I did on the left hand side? Well, I'm going to re redo the first and the bottom lines 
without realizing I'd spaced it incorrectly on the between the first and second lines I just carried on and didn't realize I'd done that so then I deliberately left a space between the final two lines thinking well maybe it'll look okay but I'm not satisfied so I'm going to remove those and redo it the verse says better it is to be of a humble spirit with the lonely with the low no it is the lowly I'm sorry let me start again better it is to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud so true and on the right hand side it would normally have it did say the original Esther Cop stitched this in such and such a year um, but I'm going to I think I'm going to stitch Esther Cop stitched this in whatever year it was and Belinda Roberts stitched this in 2018 so that's what I'm thinking of doing um, stating my name there I'll get try to make a close-up some people were asking for close-ups of the detail you'll see that there are specialty stitches in the center of alphabets uh, rice stitches and Algerian eyelets everything else is in cross stitch in terms of the lettering of the verse that's in black and the alphabet that's in black I did some tiny little um, cross stitches spasmodically I just popped them in to embolden the font a little bit so I did do some tiny wee cross stitches one thread over one on this 36 count linen so um, it just looked more authentic when I looked at the Smithsonian site and you're able to see the actual sampler really really clearly the wording didn't look accurate from the chart not as accurate as I would have liked so I have just as I said tried to embolden it a little bit um, to make it I think look less contemporary I was concerned that the font looked a bit too modern so that's why I did that um, so I'm hoping to finish that in the next couple of days and I suspect I'm going to start summer at Hollyberry Farm by Stacey Nash Primitives. I think that's what I'm going to start next. And I have some other whips that I want to try and get out of the way as well because I might want to use one of Tracy's scroll frames when I'm stitching summer at Hollyberry Farm. So I might have another finish to show you next week or whenever I get my next video done um, I just want to say thank you to everyone for subscribing thank you for your encouraging comments and liking my videos I really appreciate it uh, it's been quite a lonely week I had a couple of days when I was very sick and off work earlier in the week there's been a nasty bug going around and oh gosh I, I was a bit lonely so I watched loads of floss tube I love Nicole's needle Nicole's needleworks um, Nicole is I have watched every single one of her videos now so I got caught up while I was sick I also love watching Kid and Stitcher Teresa Vinette uh, she's so informative she's knowledgeable about needlework and um, oh my goodness she has lots of great tips so I've been watching a lot of her videos as well. I really do enjoy Floss Tube and it's lovely to have the company. So from the South Island of New Zealand, Pearl and I will say bye bye. Keep stitching and please do come back and watch Magpies and Me. Thank you. Bye.